Hello, Chem 20s. Our lesson today is on variables. When doing a scientific experiment, there are three types of variables we're going to concentrate on. First, I like to think about what is the manipulated variable. You might have in previous studies called this the independent variable. This is the property that you are deliberately changing in an experiment. This is the variable where you have made the choice and you are going to be testing for this when you do a lab. You have made the choice, you're intentionally changing whether the mass of the piece of magnesium that you use or the amount of sunlight that you're going to use on a plant or the quantity of water you're going to give a plant. You made a choice to manipulate this single variable. The responding variable is what responds to your manipulated variable. Now again, Somebody else might call this a dependent variable, but the responding variable is again singular. It is what do you expect to see or what do you see based on the fact that you manipulated or changed intentionally another variable. A controlled variable is also called a fixed variable, is also called a restrained va variable. These are the variables that you intentionally are keeping constant throughout each of the different trials through the whole experiment. This is something you have control over, and this is something that you have intentionally, on purpose, decided to control in the lab. Now, an easy way to remember when graphing something on a lab is mix dry. Now, again, this is and this is a good memory aid in order to remember where do I put certain variables. So when I go to do a graph, MIX stands for manipulated independent X axes. So when I'm doing a lab, always when I graph the data on the X axes is where you're going to place the manipulated variable or the independent variable, depending what you call it. When graphing your data in a lab, Dry tells you what do you place on the y-axis. On the y-axis, you were always going to place either the dependent variable or the responding variable. This is a very simple memory aid to use so you know when graphing your work what should go on the x, what should go on the y-axis. It does matter. So let's take a look at an experiment. So the experiment we're going to do is we're going to have a series of different bean plants. And we're going to see how does the length of time a bean seed is placed in the sun affect the height the bean will grow. So we're intentionally going to change the length of time the bean is placed in the sun, which means that is going to be my manipulated variable. I am manipulating the length of time. So let's get a color here. length of time bean plant is in the sun. So because we are manipulating the length of time a bean plant is in the sunlight, what do we expect to see? What is going to respond because of that? And I would guess if you read the problem, a good problem will tell you the manipulated and the responding. And so the responding variable is going to be the height of bean seed. So how high the bean seed grows. Now, we don't have to use height. We could have done how many leaves the bean seed plant has on it how wide are the bean seed leaves, how many beans are produced. But again, we chose height to measure for our bean seed. Well, what are some controlled variables? What I like to do is let's think our way through this experiment. So if I have a series of pots, all exactly the same, I fill them all with dirt, And again, I put this one in the sunlight for zero hours, two hours, 
four hours, six hours, eight hours during the day. What are some variables we are going to control for a point? So we have changed the number of hours. That's what we manipulated, length of time beans in the thing. We've decided we're going to measure the height. Well, some controlled variables could be size of pot. Because if all the pots aren't exactly the same, then how do you know that the bean seed isn't growing taller because it's got more room to grow roots? Or maybe it's deeper. Um, we could also go with um, irrigation holes. In pot. So if the first two pots have no holes in the bottom, and then the third pot has five holes in the bottom, and the other two have only three holes, maybe a plant grows taller because some of the water leaks out or some of the water just is stored in there. So the plant always has extra water. This is something we're intentionally gonna control. Maybe it's that type of soil. So it's 100% potting soil. You can't have potting soil 100% in two of them, and then peat moss in th two of them, and then a mixture of peat moss and potting soil in one of them. They all have to be exactly the same. It might be um, volume of water. Make sure that all the plants are watered the same amount. Type of water. What if some got distilled water and others got tap water? And tap water might have extra nutrients that the plant actually needs. How about where you're going to water it? Imagine watering, you're putting, you're going to pour. 10 milliliters every day on top of your bean seed. What if you pour on top for some of the plants and down the side, missing the bean seed for others of your plants? All of these things are things you want to control. Um, age of bean seed. You don't want it to be that you found three bean seeds in a drawer from 1945, so you use them, and then you bought a new batch of bean seeds that are less than a year old for the other two pots. So again, most of these experiments, I'm starting with very easy ones like a grade four experiment, but you can see there are a lot of variables now. You could easily go back to an elementary school experiment or maybe one you did in elementary school and come up with better controlled variables more in, in controlled variables. I am making you come up with a minimum of three. Now, when we go to graph this data, remembering dry mix. So on the y-axis, this is where we're putting our dry dependent or responding variable. Our responding variable, this is where we had the height of bean plant. Again, if you know a variable for this, my guess is we're going to measure probably in millimeters or even centimeters. Put it in there. So you have your y-axis labeled. On your x-axis, this would be mix. This is where you put your manipulated or your independent variable. So your manipulated variable on this one was length of time Bean plant was in sunlight. And when we made up our example, we were recording sunlight in hours. So you would then graph, again, having a little graph doesn't tell us a whole lot. What are we saving all this graph paper for? I want you to use minimum two thirds of your graph paper. So pick numbers down the side on the y and the x axis so you will take up minimum two-thirds of your graph paper. The other big thing is I want a good title. I just don't want length versus height. I want a good title. So we are testing how height affects, how, sorry, length of time in the sunlight affects the height of a bean seed. So how length of time exposed to sunlight 
effects bean plant growth. Again, if you want to underline your title, go straight ahead. So again, it's all about being specific. We are going to start caring more about details. Okay, in experiment number two, I would like you to pause the video. If you need to refer back to what each variable type means, please do that. Can you determine, please, what is the manipulated variable, the responding variable, and a minimum of three controlled variables in this experiment? Unpause your video when you would like to check your answers with mine. So the problem is, what happens to the pressure inside a beach ball when the volume of the ball is inflated? I am intentionally changing the volume of the ball by inflating it. So my manipulated variable will be the volume of the beach ball. So I am inflating the ball. My responding variable is I want to see what happens when I inflate or deflate the ball based on pressure inside. So mine's going to be pressure inside the beach ball. And now you have to ask yourselves, what are three variables you can control in this experiment? Now, I'm assuming there are more than three you can control, but I'm just going to pick three, try to get a variety on here. So I would control the size of beach balls used. I want to use all beach balls the same size. I want to buy the identical beach balls. The reason I want to do this is because some beach balls, you'll notice in my picture, where the white and the red is sewn together, or the white and the yellow, or the blue, the red, the yellow, and the white are sewn together, those are seams. Those would be the weak spots. So that could be a spot where, let's say, air inside the beach ball could escape. So we want to make sure that we have um, the same number of seams. on each beach ball because if a ball has only five pieces sewn together or in our case we have three red white yellow white blue whites so we have six so six compared to five there with five there's less seams so maybe less volume will escape out of the ball based on the pressure um, another one could possibly be gas inside a beach, beach ball. There is a huge difference if I blow it up with air, which is a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, because I'm blowing it up. Or if I, let's say, fill two of the beach balls out of the five with helium. Helium is a much smaller gas. You'll notice that if you've ever bought balloons before, one with helium, one you've blown up, the helium balloon usually loses air quicker because helium is a smaller molecule, which means it can fit through cracks that maybe an air molecule or an oxygen molecule can't fit through as easily. Hope you understand the difference between the three types of variables. Um, again, we could graph this if we wanted to. Again, we have our y-axis, x-axis. So, Mix, x-axis is for manipulated. We ma manipulated the volume of gas inside a beach ball. And I would assume the volume would probably be in milliliters. We also are going to then y-axis, so Dry, that's my responding or dependent variable. This is going to be the pressure inside beach ball. Oh, I spelled beach wrong. And the pressure could be measured in atmospheres, kilopascals. I'm going to choose kilopascals because that's a unit we're going to use in Chem 20. And again, when I go to write this, um, I'm going to pick a good title. So my title might be something like 
Hmm, let's see. Ow, volume, effects, the pressure inside a beach ball. And then we would graph our data, of course.